what's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this one, I'll be showing you how to optimize Cities Skylines 2 for the best performance on PC. Though, before we begin, this video is a super simple breakdown of the settings you should be changing and focusing on the most, rather than an in-depth guide, as in the description down below, you'll find a Gamers Nexus video where they covered optimization in extreme detail over the course of half an hour. This game has left a lot on the table for performance, and of course, it'll slowly improve as time goes on, but for now, at least close to launch, it's a bit painful to play on most hardware. Anyways, if you have the game and you'd like to play it at playable frame rates, that's hopefully what I'll get you to in this video now. Without further ado, let's begin. This video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all. As usual, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and Nvidia optimization guides to get more out of your PC. Well, instead, hop straight into the game. All right, so starting from the very top, simply head into Options, followed by General, and make sure the performance preference is set to frame rate for the best, most stable performance. You can set simulation speed instead. If you find that that's something your game struggles with, you'll notice severe drop drops in performance the bigger your city gets with more going on at a time. Frame rate is a good choice for the very start, but if you find that for some reason the simulation speed messes up a bit later, change it back to balanced here. If you're only really going to run smaller cities, frame rate is a good option. I'd also recommend enabling autosave, but this is a user preference. In the graphics tab, we can start customizing here. We have simple and advanced views. Advanced just adds more options here. And for the most part, changing your settings on simple should be good enough for a great performance increase. Starting at the very top, screen resolution. This game and their devs recommend running at whatever you need to to get a solid 30 frames per second. That's a hilariously low number for PC games, but that's what we're going for here. I suppose more playable than not playable. Anyways, this is obviously going to improve over time. And the things that they recommend the most the developers themselves is to set your screen resolution to 1080p, so 1920 by 1080 instead of playing at 2K or 4K if you have these options, as it'll free up a ton of graphics card. Unlike City Skylines 1, where it was mostly CPU intensive, this game is not only CPU intensive, but GPU intensive as well. It needs a lot of power to get going. For now though, I'll be playing at 2K, and if frame rates get a little bit unplayable, I'll be dropping it later on. I'd much rather take higher visual fidelity over improved FPS, and I'll only really drop this as a last resort. That being said, usually you'll mess around with upscalers in a situation like this, but for now, we can head across to Advanced instead, scroll down a little bit, and you'll find this section here where we can change the Dynamic Resolution Scale, leave Adaptive Dynamic Resolution Scale, instead you'll see Upsampling Filter. You can leave this at the default, or rather change it to something like AMD FSR 1. They do plan on adding more, so hopefully DLSS, FSR 2, XESS, etc., but for now, FSR 1 is all we have to go off of. Then change the Dynamic Resolution to Constant, and set the Minimum Resolution target here to maybe 75-ish percent, and we can always move this further to the left for more performance. So 75, maybe 80% upscaler for now. Then heading back to simple mode, V-Sync should be turned off unless you're getting screen tearing with the top and bottom half break apart, and depth of field, they highly recommend changing to disabled for a great performance increase. Scrolling down, you'll see dynamic resolution scale quality is set to custom. This we set in advanced, and we only have these options here. Anti-aliasing, I'd recommend changing to none as we're using an upscaler it should smooth out jagged edges but if you're playing without an upscaler set this to low smaa scrolling down volumetrics quality has a huge impact set this to disabled down further depth of field quality disabled and motion blur disabled motion blur can smooth out weird frame stutters and things like that when you're flying around the city but i really wouldn't rely on this set this to disabled and if you find that your game is too micro stuttery motion blur is something that can help hide the effect the rest of these options here, you can pretty much leave as is, but for the most part, head up to the very top and set your graphics quality to low to start with and move your way up. So for example, anti-aliasing none, as we have a custom upscaler, volumetrics disabled, depth of field disabled, motion blur disabled, and on the advanced tab, we'll make sure it's still FSR1 at maybe 75 or 80%. With this, we should see a great improvement performance. I'll head into game on any old map, and of course this won't be super representative of what you'll get, but enabling an overlay, you can see we're sitting at a solid 100-ish FPS at 2K. The game doesn't look the best, but this is probably as good as you'll be able to play with a playable frame rate when you have a working city going on. You'll definitely drop 
from 100 FPS to much lower, but this is the game at low settings on a 3080 Ti at 2K. If you find that you have your city built out and you're really struggling, setting it to 1080p, you can see we went out around 115, 20-ish FPS, but we're starting to notice some weird artifacts, things like that. This is where we can re-enable anti-aliasing to try and improve these weird pixely objects and things like that. I'll enable anti-aliasing on low, and this should be good enough to fix a lot of it. Obviously not perfect though. If we were instead to try and crank up to 2K again, there's a great improvement in quality and just for the fun of it, changing the graphics quality to medium, a slight improvement in how the game looks, but not much to be honest. And we pretty much halved our FPS, which is actually hilarious. If we head back to options, change it to high instead, you'll see yet again, a huge FPS drop. We're now sitting at around 50-ish FPS and keep in mind, I haven't even got to building a city yet. This is definitely not good to say the absolute least. And not to mention, things still look really aliased and pixely. There's a huge amount on the table that still needs to be optimized further. For the most part, you'll likely be playing on low settings where you'll get a decent FPS. And in the advanced tab, you'll want to change to FSR at around 75% to get a much better looking game as the low setting instead drops FSR to just 50% resolution. So at 1080p, you're only actually rendering 720p. Anyways, it's very disappointing to say the least. That really is about it for this optimization guide. You now know which options are the most important to change. And of course, unfortunately for now, we're pretty much stuck on the lowest possible settings. This game has already had a few updates to try and improve performance, but there's still a ton more work to be done. This game doesn't look very good on lower settings, but for most people, this is what you'll need it on to have it playable at all. If you find that the game isn't worth 60 or however many dollars it is currently, I'd highly recommend checking out Xbox Game Pass instead. You can get that on PC for only a few dollars or even a free trial. You'll be able to download this game for free if you have that subscription or a free trial, and you can try it out yourself pretty much no strings attached. This isn't an ad for Xbox Game Pass or anything, it's just a recommendation that if you don't know how this game is going to perform on your system, instead of diving in and having to refund it later on, try it out on the Xbox Game Pass, see how it works for you, and then possibly buy it or leave it in the oven a bit longer until the developers fix up some well-needed performance patches. Other than that, there's a huge amount of customization, if only we were able to use this to its fullest extent and make our game look really good while still keeping some really good FPS. But for now, that's just not an option. As sad as it is, that's just where we're at. So anyways, hopefully you found this video somewhat interesting. I can only readily recommend waiting a bit for this game to improve. And if you really want to get stuck into it now, you'll need to drop pretty much all of your settings to get a playable frame rate. Sorry I couldn't offer you much more, but in the future when this game does improve, I should return here to show you just how far it's come, hopefully. I'm looking forward to that day, but for now, my name's been Troubleshoot. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.